everybody, Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm going to show you how you can use your embroidery hoops to make really nice pieces of home decor. So this is just a nice little kind of welcome plaque, I guess, and it's just going to hang it in my hallway. I've got all these lovely leaves to decorate it, so I've gone with an autumn theme because that is the season that is now approaching us although outside it feels like it already is. And then I've just done welcome. It's really easy to do. You should be able to do this with most of the supplies that you already have. And um, yeah, just enjoy it. It's lots of fun. I've yeah loved every minute of making this. So hopefully you're enjoying my video. So let me show you how I made it. Okay, so this is the magazine. So it's issue 177 Papercraft Essentials and the embossing folder. And then you get the die. So you get the outline so it's the outline edge die and then you get the inner vein die so this is the one with all the details so I'm going to be showing you how to use those two I won't be using the embossing folder today because of obviously the project that I'm doing but let's start so this is how I work so a lot of the time I prepare my videos and I do a lot of this stuff off camera and I just say you need 10 leaves or something I don't show you how to do them but because of the project I'm doing um, and that part's really quick I can spend more time doing all these kind of detailed pieces. So this is my mess. This is my, me being, you know, creative. And so you don't have to have your leaves this colour. They can be any colour you want, but obviously with it being autumn now or we're coming into autumn, it feels like it, even though it is still officially summer, I am obviously sticking with those colours. So I've got some oranges, I've got yellows, and I've got browns. Now the brown, or yeah, the darker colour, I've used just craft card. So this craft card is actually quite good because it's got two slightly different sides. So that one's a little bit more orangey, that one's more grey. So again, I can just flip it and I'll get two different kind of tones. So I'm going to be using some of that. And then I'm going to also use some of the, actually no, I'm going to do, I'm going to do another yellow and I'm going to do some orange. So you can see the colours, there they are you know, without being distressed. So you don't even have to distress them, but I'm going to show you the different kind of ways that I like to, yeah, distress things a little. So first of all, you want to die cut your frame and then you're going to die cut both again together to give you that detail. The nice thing when you're working with smaller dies is you don't have to worry about getting your big die machine out. So I'm just using my little one here. Okay, so there it is, first of all, just cut as a frame. And it's really lovely. The detail in this die is just, yeah, really, really nice. So now I'm gonna pop that die down again, but I'm gonna pop this in between. Now you may wanna just tack it down with a little bit of tape just to keep it in place. So you wanna make sure that you have a border all the way around the detailed piece. Okay, so it's that one there. I think that's enough to hold it in place. Again, I always put this little shim on my dye machine. It just seems to, I guarantee it cuts first time. I don't have to run it through. So obviously everybody's is different. I shouldn't really be doing it on this filthy mat, but anyway. Okay, so now you get this detail. So you can just, all the pieces just fall out straight away. It does cut beautifully, like so. Okay, now you can cut this using some double sided sticky sheets and stick the sticky sheet on here first and cut it. I'm just going to pop some glue on the back of my hand. Obviously, if you have sensitive skin, then I don't recommend you do that. Otherwise, just use a precision tip glue. And then I'm just going to, don't mind if I get any over the top because it all dries clear. And then you just stick that over the top. Okay, and there you have a really lovely, very detailed die cut. But I don't want to keep mine like that. Obviously you can, they do still look lovely like that. What I'm going to do now is distress it. So I've just got a brown ink here. Now I do have the blending brushes, and I, I love these, absolutely love them. But I just find for something like this, when you want to get a real dark bit, just on kind of little points of, of something, I find it's better to still use that, but I'll show you both ways. So this way here, I'll just go around like so. So I'll do that one half with the brush and then the other half, I always kind of dab off it there and then go in and I just get a much more, you can see, intense look. And that's what I'm going for for this. I'm just gonna go around and just Get a little bit more on there. 
and then I'm just brushing it over the top like so and it just brings out all the detail even more okay so that's how I've got these ones and then just to finish it off if I bring these up here can you see there's a little bit of gold just kind of there we go just that shimmer and all I've got here is these are really old these are just little rub-on metallic it's just the same as um, gilding wax I've got them in the charity shop but basically just get I always use this one here and then just rub a bit onto my mat and then just literally brush it over like so now it just highlights you've still got the brown distressed color but it just highlights those areas and when it hits the light you get that lovely gold effect and I just think it looks really nice I might put a little bit more on that one there actually but that's how I've done that and that's exactly the same way with these just using different colored so that's using the like yellowy color and then using the orange so I will speed the video up and do those bits in a moment and then the plain ones is exactly the same way because I just thought it was nice just to have a little bit of a you know a variation so I'm just going to take out just the frame so exactly the same again just bringing in my brown and then just kind of catch the ends go all the way around so you get the darkest you know of the color hitting there and then if you do have any kind of slight lines just very quickly brush over the whole thing until you kind of blend it out mix it in like so because you still want to keep the yellow color but it just gives you it's almost like it's on fire it just gives you a really nice frame without it having a frame like it does really show off the outer edges now of that die cut and then again I'm just going to use some of my gilding wax here just to touch the edges and there we go again if I just bring it out there you go you can see you just get that real nice little shine on the edges so yeah I'm going to do a few more of these because I do want quite a few for this embroidery hoop I would rather it be quite full and then if I've got any left over I can keep them for a card so yeah I've got how many have I got here I need to do more of these I think I've got enough of the plain now I'm going to do some more of these in the orange and the yellow Okay, so now I'm all cleaned up and I've got everything, well, in terms of my leaves, I've got it all ready. And again, let me just bring them up because the lights got really, we just had an awful weather and it's been raining, but you can see now just how lovely. Got the, uh, that one there is a bit more distressed. That one there, look at it. They just look really, really nice. So they're all ready. So, okay, so I've got an eight and a half inch diameter embroidery hoop. This was literally a couple of pounds from the charity shop. So you get them, they come like that and that will be screwed tighter so it doesn't come out. Just unscrew it and the middle hoop will come out. I've got my mesh here, which I'm just gonna sit over the smaller hoop. Okay, so just make sure it covers it because you'll cut away any excess. Then you pop your larger hoop over the top and it will make it all nice and taut. You can put it a little bit more if you want to like so and then you just want to twist this here and it will tighten and again as it's tightening you can pull this around a bit more if you want it you know if it is gaping at all but it usually will keep it nice and taut when you bring it in there but now that's quite bouncy now I'm just going to go around and just trim off the excess okay and then turn it over and you've got that all ready so now you've got this nice base to be able to start building up your scene so I have just started pulling a few bits together I've got these little wooden kind of cut up twigs here which I brought from the works um, a few weeks back now I've got some buttons just things that are all kind of gold and bronze and rose gold and just that autumn kind of color I, I guess I've got embossing powder here because I may dump some down and then heat blast it. So I've got copper embossing powders, paper mania, and then I've got the rose gold wow one. 
I've got my little drawer of feathers because I thought some of these may well look quite nice just kind of nestled in. So I've got those. I have these bits here, if you remember when I got those, anybody that uh, is watching that follows. And I thought some of these little sprigs could look quite nice, again, as just more texture. And then I have all these pieces. So I picked these up from the Home Bargains. And initially I was going to do wedding cards, but um, that's just gone amiss. So I thought these are going to look lovely to have as my... What I plan to do is have these running through the centre, because this one sits perfectly over the top. I'm going to fray all of the edges, okay? So I'm not really going to cut too much off. And then I'm going to have my kind of... I don't know whether to have just welcome, because I think this would be quite nice to have in the hall. So just have welcome there, and then all the leaves built up around it. So I've just got here some garden twine. I've got this red one here as well, because these would be nice to make the hook. So I'm just kind of getting everything together, and then I can decide what I'm going to do. And then I have this very large glass kind of... I don't, know, I don't know what you would call it actually. Anyway, bowl with a handle, but it's full of old Scrabble pieces. I collect them as you can see, and they're great for doing these kind of home decor pieces. So I'm thinking I'm gonna dump this all out and look for the letters to make and spell out welcome. Or I might even have home, welcome autumn. I need to have a little think about it because I'm not entirely sure and obviously I need to clear my desk to be able to tip all of these out. I might just do it on the carpet. But um, yeah, that's what I plan to do. But you can just die cut something. These may well end up being too small. I might end up wanting something bigger. So I might end up cutting something on my Cricut machine or using my dies. I need to, again, have a little look. So I do have the large Stampin' Up! ones as well, so I might well use those. But I'm going to lay everything out, first of all. And I would say that's the best thing for you to do, kind of get an idea of, of how you want things to look. So with my leaves, I plan in my head, I'm going to have a cluster up here and a cluster down here. You can just do one down here. You could do them going all the way around. You know, there are so many lovely ways to, to do this. So let's have a little look. Okay, so I'm going to go for something up here and something down here. So first of all, I'm going to get my glue gun all warmed up and I'm going to just roughly cut. I don't, obviously, I don't want that much hanging over the edge, but I do want enough to have that kind of frayed look. So let's do, let's do that for the minute and then I'm just going to start pulling this all apart. Okay, so I've changed it up a little bit. I've frayed these, but I'm going to have them all here and then I'm going to have a big bow, I think. <laughs> I keep changing my mind. I think they just need to be a little bit more kind of like that. And I quite like it. There's something about that that I like. And that's the nice thing about this is you can do so many cool things. I'm not sure whether I'll end up using bits like this. I might have a few twigs. Maybe I could do something with them on the edges here. I think if I start curling all the edges up and things like that, I think it's going to look really good. I'm going to just play around with a bow. Okay, so I'm going to go for this bow. This is a wired ribbon, which I've had for ages. I have used it once before in a project. But it's nice because obviously this isn't ever going to be flattened unless it go, you know, obviously I put it in storage, but you can really shape the bow. So I've just done that one. And I know it kind of, you can't really see it too well, but in the in person it does show up quite nicely. I think I'm just going to go for it and get it start getting it stuck down and um, yeah, then I can do this. So I'm going to stick this first. I'm going to use my hot glue and I'm just going to attach it to the, the sides here, so actually I'm just going to put my, because you don't want to melt the mesh, so I'm going to pop a piece there, and again there, and obviously with the hot glue you've got a little bit of wiggle room, make sure I've got it even, I need to come across a little bit, there we go, and then this one here, 
Okay, so now I don't really want to change it because I like the kind of formation that I've got in terms of, I think I've got a nice equal amount of the colour coming off, so I'm just going to have to carefully kind of lift each layer like this. There we go. And again with these ones I'm going to add some foam adhesive. This will stick really well to the net without melting, you know, or, or weakening it, you know, and the glue just maybe dripping through. So I'm going to, plus it does give it a little bit of dimension, and I'm, I am going to just kind of curl up the, the kind of edges here because you can always flatten them again if they're a bit too much but I think it is going to help with the overall look so we'll pop that one there and just go underneath and just make sure that's all stuck so I'm going to put this on high speed now and slowly work my way through this you may see me change a few things along the way but I'll talk you through that at the end So I've stuck everything down. Let me just take this off because I was playing around and I need to just stress and show you how I've done my letters. So this is what I've done. I love it. It just looks so nice. It's got a mix of these like plastic gold covered sprigs. It's got all of the obviously the other leaves and I've stuck my wired bow down. I've put a button in the middle there which was just um, from my stash. I'm going to add a nice handle with you all in a moment and then obviously you saw me stick that down. So what I've gone ahead and done, I've decided I'm not going to use the scrabble pieces, I don't think they quite work with it. So I've got, this is an old, this is the X-Cut Folk Alphabet dies, but they've got a nice shape to them so I've gone and die cut them in the craft card for the top and then I've gone and die cut it all again in some brown fun foam. Okay, just to give it some dimension. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick all of my, each letter, so there's the craft card letter, onto the other one underneath. But what I'm going to do is offset them slightly, make sure I've got them right away because they are all slightly a bit different. But I'm going to offset it just slightly so you get a bit of the darker brown behind, so it almost frames it. But then I'm going to distress it again and I'm going to add a little bit of gilding wax. So I'm going to clear all this away, bring in my pink matte, and you'll see me do that. I'll do it, put it on high speed because again you know the process now but um, I'll come back and show you in more detail. Okay so I've just stressed them all exactly the same way as I've done the leaves. You can just see the gilding wax there just glowing, glowing, just kind of shining there as it hits the light and there's the foam on the back. So now when I sit these on here and you will see this much better in the photos because I really don't think my camera is doing this justice today because I think this looks really really lovely. So I'm going to spell out welcome. Like so, because I've got that brown fun foam behind it and I've just distressed it a bit, it really does lift it from the, the background there. So I'm going to get that stuck down. Now I need to be very careful on what I use because hot glue is just going to ooze and you're going to see it. And I want to make, but obviously wet glue, I need to make sure it's really going to stick. So I'm going to go for my tacky glue. Whether that's the right choice or not, I don't know. But because it's tacky, it should stick really well to this. So... Again, I'm going to speed this up and hopefully it will work. Okay, so there's that now stuck down. Can you see how it's nicely raised off the surface? And you can again just see all that gilding wax catching in the light. Now, I'm not sure whether I want to do something here. I feel like it needs like a couple of circles or something, but I think, I don't know if they're going to look the right thing to have there. Those balls don't look right. I don't think 
I mean, it's almost like I'm starting a little fire or something there. I don't know if that's really right there either. So I'm going to have a little think about that. And they could maybe work. It needs something, but yeah, I'll get back to you. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to use the scrap of what I cut off from this here. So this is a piece here. It's taken me ages, you know, it's taken me longer to think about these two little pieces and it has the whole thing. So <laughs> I went and had some dinner, just sat down for a bit, still thinking about it, and then came up and just thought, no, I'm going to shove those there. So <laughs> that's what I'm doing. So I'm just cutting a kind of square. Again, I'm eyeballing all of this. If you want to be more precise and measure, you can. But because I'm going to be fraying it anyway. So I'd already gone and just frayed all of the edges there. I'm going to pop it stick it down there and then I've cut the button loop off the back just so it's nice and flush and that's just going to stick over the top it just needed something I did try some more leaves some small leaves things like that but I just yeah I just wasn't feeling it so I'm just picking away it's really easy to start it off and just pulling out all the little the kind of the weave there the threads just to create yeah that little bit of frayed edge on it so I'm just going to do this one Okay, so there is my finished hanging embroidery hoop and I absolutely adore this. It's ended up differently to how I thought but I'm so happy with the end result. I've just stuck those both down as I just mentioned and I also went under here as well with some a bead of glue as well just to keep that all secure. I added my handle which is just on the back. The back isn't pretty at all but for me it doesn't matter. It's not going to be seen because that's going to go against the wall. So um, it's going to like hang off hang off something in the hallway so I'm not worried about the back but obviously if you are putting this on your door or, or somewhere where there's glass people can see both sides and yeah you may want to do that a bit differently to myself but I love this I hope you do too I hope it's inspired you to look at your supplies in a different way and you know make some nice home decor pieces because these are so fun to make and so cheap so inexpensive that would make a lovely gift make this Christmas themed you know you could give that to your neighbour or you know your friend Have them at craft fairs they are really really fun to make so yeah hope it's inspired you hope you have a go and thank you for watching so give me a thumbs up if you've enjoyed today and subscribe to my channel so you get to see more thanks for watching bye